How's it folks? Welcome to another episode of 4x4 Viewfinder. Today we're installing, as you could see in the description, a snorkel. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. Um, it's a badger snorkel. And they might be fit Hilux and Fortuner and so on. Um, we couldn't get one that does not say Hilux, but I'm not really bothered about that. Um, I'm just imagining it says Fortuner. But anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a tedious build. Um, you'll need a couple of hours, if this is your first snorkel you're putting on, you'll need a couple of hours to get your thing sorted. So, take about five to six hours for you to install this. Um, in here, I'm going to be making the mistakes and everything so that you can see what you need to do so that when you install it, you do it the right way. Um, I went through a lot of videos on YouTube trying to find one that shows you exactly how to install it. And it looks fine when you watch the video, but this I bet you there's a lot of parts that don't show. And in this case, I'm going to be showing you and telling you exactly what you should do. All right, but without further ado, let's get into it. So folks, before we get into what's in the box, I just want to share some information with you. Um, something as relatively simple as this, um, uh, I'd, I'd want you to try and do it yourself. Um, it's really not that hard. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of info out there about how to install these things. Um, in most cases, some of the engineering practices aren't employed and that's what I'm trying to do with this video. I'm going to show you some good engineering practices, stuff you can do extra to make this thing last just so much longer. Um, having it installed by installers, sometimes some shortcuts are taken. Now, I'm a technician by trade and I, I know, you know, these guys will say, no, we don't. We, we. I know for a fact if, if the owner or the, the, the main peanut is not standing there over the shoulder of the person installing this, shortcuts will be taken that's just how it happens if you've installed something hundreds of times you you you're either going to be extremely proficient at it doing it exactly the way it's supposed to be or you are going to take shortcuts now i'm not saying anything bad about any installers um don't get me wrong it's not uh, about that i'm just saying for that for that one time that one guy that installed it that took that shortcut that makes this thing rattle and wear out the holes in the body um, or something's not fitted properly and your vehicle ingests um, sand and dust while you're driving. For that one time, something as simple as this, I'd say rather do it yourself because that those guys do exist. And um, unfortunately, that is a fact. So if it's something you are not able to install yourself, like doing a full-on suspension, upgrade and stuff or you're not 100% sure about how to do it properly the torque settings all those things information you can't get to do it properly then take it to installer and have it done but for something like this if you want this thing to last forever and 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 work the way you'd like it to work do it yourself it's not that hard right so let's get into the contents of the box night folks so you get your snorkel, you get your snorkel head, you get your fittings and adjustments and then you get your S-Bend with your rubber adapter and you also get your template. Now a couple of things I'd like you to add to that. Um, you'll need a 108 millimeter hole saw, a metal hole saw, one that can cut metal. But you can't just go and buy only this, you need to buy an arbor as well. But make sure you buy the right arbor because it needs to fit in here. And the small one won't fit on this, so you're going to have to get the bigger one. Right? Now this is an automatic punch, which means you just press it 
and it clicks and fires a little punch hole in the nice and now if you're going to use a, a punch with a um, with a hammer you might dent the body and that's not a good idea a punch like this is perfect um, you just you can line it up perfectly to to where it needs to be you don't even have to cut this hole out you line it up you press it it clicks and it makes a hole right next up you can use silicon I prefer to use um, this gasket maker now you get different ones this is one I have already uh, that I've bought and, and is in here and we'll get to why you'll need that then you get this little rubber it looks like that more or less all right get yourself a meter or two of that even more I can tell you now once you have it you'll find a lot of jobs for it but if we've cut this hole um, we're going to primer it and then we're going to fit this around it to seal it up because there will be vibrations when the vehicle drives and those vibrations might chafe off there and cause rust the other thing is also the reason why we use the gasket maker is look you're going to be drilling a couple of holes in the body of your vehicle so um, using gasket maker I'll show you how to do that that's one of those engineering practices I was talking about and also primer a good primer um, to seal up here and then after that for the nuts and bolts a corrosion inhibitor now tactile or any one of those things will work um, but you know this will just seal the deal for you and make sure that your your install will be perfect all right folks so first up we're going to lift the vehicle we're going to remove the wheel so that we can remove the plastic cover on the inside so we can get access to the inside of the fender then we'll open up we'll remove the air filter so that we can have access to straight through for the s bend when we need to attach the s bend right and uh, yeah let's get stuck into it folks sorry for the wind but check here um, for the next part you're gonna need a flat screwdriver um, a thin socket and a lot of patience um, these little clips are uh, the they could have made screw in tips or just made them normal bolts that you screw in or something like that but they choose to opt for this plastic nonsense that is a should remove now look To remove this this guy here so these clips are not fun but we don't need to remove it all the way down we just need to remove it so that we can peel this part down so that we have access to the inner fender well all right let's get stuck into it removed this little guy is attached to the inside of the body attached through here onto the body you loosen this nut it's a 10 more volt and then your air intake will be free to move and then we'll move to the inside and start removing this guy Right folks, so next up is this guy, um, but first we're going to be working down there especially with those impossible little plastic clips, be careful I use your tools, uh, screwdriver slip almost hit me in the eye, um, so just be wary of that. I took a shortcut, like I said, um, sometimes one does, and I cut the piece of plastic that extends to the side from that little nut so I didn't have to remove them, so I can just clip or slip it back in. 
and then when it tightens with the bolt, it'll lengthen the, the plastic as well. Um, best practice will be, I think Toyota perhaps has a tool that can remove that. Um, but yeah, be careful. And right, let's get stuck into this and see how far we get. This little PPK sticking out here. Now this will just clip out or turn and clip out. And uh, yeah, let me just see if I can. There we go. So that's where the air intake will be through. You can check it from the bottom. So the S bend will attach to there, come to this side over here, and there'll be a hole made somewhere around there. So, first up what we're going to do is, we're going to attach the template, so we can make our holes to drill down. Um, but also, after we've done that, we're going to attach the um, bottom part of the snorkel, so we can get our alignment for the top here, where the mounting bracket comes in for the intake. So yeah, let's prepare the um, template, so that we can attach it. remember bear this in mind when you uh, line this guy up even though you cut here you do not align here okay um, I, I saw now that I almost made that mistake I, I lined it up here and I thought I should align it up here but if you read carefully it says line up with the fender on this side and here at the top it says line up with the top of the fender so this must be perfectly aligned here and here this is irrelevant this is just a section cut away so the thing doesn't flap in the wind but yeah, be careful to align these two only. All right, folks, so this is where the clicker comes in handy, right? Um, you can see the spots for you to drill are exactly lined up. And you can take a punch, but if you hit with a punch, you'll indent that metal there. Doesn't matter how you cut it. If you're going to knock it, it will do that. This thing, at least, uh, it's a very subtle point. It makes a small little hole or, or small little uh, indentation for you to just attach a very small drill, the sm almost the smallest drill you can find. To just get a pilot hole and then from there you'll take it out bigger as you need it. But for now let's line this up perfectly and get a couple of dots pushed down. Pilot holes. Now we're going to start. We need an 8.5 millimeter drill. We're going to use an 8.5 millimeter drill for all these guys, and then we'll use the 108 mm hole saw for this guy. Yeah. 
starts now you need your half round or oval file if you start from one side and just file down the edges So prep work is done. Just wiping this guy down. Um, now the next part is going to be on the inside. We're going to have to um, prep the snorkel for the install. Right, let's get into it. Alright folks, so let's start off. These guys, uh, let's open up and see what's in the bag. Okay, so we have our clamps. And that's where they go, I believe. All right, and then we've got this stainless steel clamp, which is the one that attaches to the vehicle. Um, and attaches to this part here so we'll do that after we've set up this part here okay we will also be needing some lock nuts nut lock um, to attach these bolts so these guys will be going in We'll be going in these holes, we'll attach the nut lock to them. And these guys, it's two, four, five, two, four, six. So that's, let's see. And that's used for there as well. And these two is for there. And these are for here. So, six, six. Yeah, I think that's that. Okay, they give these rivets. They look relatively good quality. I've got proper stainless steel ones, but I'm very sure they'll be fine. All right, so this works as these nuts screw into here with some nut lock. Um, then from you attach this guy to the fender, and then these guys come in the back with these lock nuts, and you tighten this to the, the body of the vehicle. But now, firstly. Before I fully attach this, I'm going to use some of the silicone and I'm going to make like this. Before I do the final install, I'll put some of that, like a thick bead of it around each bolt. The reason I do that is it's also twofold because one, it'll seal these nuts and protect the body as well from uh, moisture and stuff uh, getting to the exposed part of the body. And on these I'll do the exact same. I'll put a bead around the outside, attach it, tighten it, and then it will seal the body from any moisture that could get in there. Because what would happen if moisture gets in here, water and everything, um, when the body starts rusting, you'll have tears running down the side of your vehicle, rust tears of that rust going down there. So that's that. But yeah, I forgot one thing. Uh, we need to primer the body first. So. Before we do this, let's primer the body, make sure that the, um, it's everywhere, and then we'll um, come do this part. So while we do this, then this can dry, and then we can just go and attach when we're done. Alright, let's get into it. 
And so folks, before we get into that, let me show you quickly. Get yourself a little container of some sorts. Take your primer, shake it well. And when it is sorted, you spray the primer in there. Because if you're going to try and spray this, especially if there's a wind, or if it's not completely with no wind blowing, then you're going to have an issue. So use this guy, spray some of it in there, and then use a little brush like this to paint it on. Um, that's for your safest way, you won't have any drippage, you won't have to worry about um, spray going everywhere on your windscreen, on your body or anything like that. Just makes things so much simpler and quicker. Very quick. Come now, focus man. Trying to get this to focus for you guys. You can see the paints on there. Try to get some good coverage. I actually gave two layers on all of these guys. Alright. So yeah, all right now we can start the prep work on the ins. Right, now we can start the prep work for this guy while this dries out. And then we can uh, do the top part. Let's get into it. Right folks, so next part. After we've done our primer, everything is sharp, it's dry, we can touch it, we can work on it. We're going to align the top part of the of this part of the schnorkel for us. Alright, they just attach the bracket, it comes with it. Um, only attach one of these nuts because why these holes will definitely not align if you attach them all and you try to push them in because of the angle that this the curvature this this plastic has so you're going to attach the top one um, like that and you're going to make it rest like that and now you can align at the top we can align where we're going to put the bracket for the um, or, or uh, make holes for the bracket for attaching the snorkel at the top but you should want to push it like this um, so that in, it's in a rest position at the top all right um, so make sure it's like that and the resting and then now we'll mark it let's have a look right there we go Now we can draw the top part and uh, attach this bracket. Here we go. Alright folks, so after a lot of fitting and turning and stuff, um, I eventually got the nuts to, to line up. I drilled one mil, uh, one yeah one mil up on every one. Um, it's uh, nine and a half size the holes now because these don't align even vaguely. Um, doesn't matter which one you put in first, they do not align. So this thing is pretty inaccurate. It's basically a guide, um, like it says. Um, but if you drill one um, millimeter up, uh, yeah one millimeter up your low holes should align if you've worked perfectly according to, to this thing so yeah um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach a bead of silicon around each of these so when it pulls tight it can um, make a nice uh, tenacity and uh, yeah then we're going to attach it yeah happy days got no limits I got no fears only got my blood, my sweat, and my tears. No, how to back down, how to back down. No, I don't know how to back down, how to back down. No, I don't know how to back down, how to back down. No, I don't know how to back down, how to back down. Alright folks, so uh, I put the 
after of the snorkel in. One thing please remember, your, your S piece that comes in and connects your outer part of the fender up your, your snorkel with your physical airbox. Before you put the whole thing in, s s slot that guy in first. So as you bring it closer and lining it up with the holes, some of connect it up on the inside as well so that it aligns because if you do do what I did and first put it up on the outside, the, the S bend does not fit in. There's not enough space on the inside, so you have to loosen the outer to get the S bend in and then close it up. And that also helps it stay there. Alright folks, like I said we're gonna start with this part this guy. Um, first things first, I first want to see the lines nicely and how I would fit it. How do I get this in nicely? I'll take it for the for that it's actually pretty snug because it's sitting slightly at the angle so it's squeezing itself up here but still like to put something there at least let's do that So look, I'll never wait this deep. I'll never take a vehicle this deep. Unless it's that six wheel Mercedes buck. But for my intents and purposes, um, I'm going to eventually raise the dip breathers and all that stuff. Do about either that side or this side. But I do not want to worry too much about water ingress into the engine. So yeah, that's why I'm just taking a little bit of extra precaution here. I got no limits, I got no fears Only got my blood, my sweat and my tears You might notice that I'm having a face to the rear. There are many schools of thought or things about where this thing should be pointing. Um, lots of guys say pointing it rearwards or forwards, you get the ram air effect. And um, I have it on good authority that the ram air induced by this is negligible there's absolutely no benefit to it facing forward um, there's only one negative part to it facing forward is that it gets the bugs and dust and everything in but by facing it rearwards like this you don't have that issue you don't ingest the bugs you just keep the air so much more cleaner and stuff on the inside so. yeah. I'll rise up. I'll rise up. 